A family's traumatic Bigfoot encounter of Sasquatch group pursuing wolves. The largest Sasquatch appeared to be consuming a wolf. Walter M. writes RMSO. Hello, my name is Walter. I'm from Alberta, Canada. I wanted to tell a story that traumatized me back when I was a young adult. I was 25 at the time. It was 1998. Me, my father, mother, and my little brother, Jake and Tomas, we were traveling in the rural area of Alberta in our trailer. I don't remember exactly where we were going or why. The only thing I remember is that we passed through some rural communities that we stopped at sometimes for my mother to buy some things. It was around 8 a.m. My father passed the night driving. I woke up and he was still driving. I sat next to him in the front passenger seat and asked him. We were close to the destination and I don't remember where it is we were going that day. He said it was going to take three or more hours. That's when he stopped the trailer and we saw something unusual. There was a huge pack of timber wolves running across the road like they were trying to escape from something. Here's what is weird. A pack of wolves don't normally run like that. They don't really get preyed on. We saw about seven of them run across the road, and then we heard a very loud stomping coming from the right side of the road, the same side the wolves appeared. Three very tall, monstrous people that had thick chestnut brown fur all over their bodies were sprinting, chasing wolves. They faded into the forest along with the wolf sounds too. Me and my father were shocked. My mom and brother woke up with the sound that they saw nothing of this. Then I said to my father, Dad, let's get out of here already. But he was still paralyzed, and now he was looking again at the road. I looked in the same direction, and I saw that there was a fourth one standing in the middle of the road looking at our trailer. This one was bigger and darker than the ones chasing the wolves. I calculated the wolf chasers to be about seven to eight feet tall, but this one was easily over 10 feet tall. It was dark brown. We could see its very wide shoulders along with its massive musculature. He had huge hands, the left one full of blood, and the right one, he was tightly holding a carcass of a timber wolf. Yes, the thing killed a timber wolf and was eating it, because we could also see the blood in his mouth too. I looked behind at my entire family that was in shock looking at it too. We heard very loud sounds from the left side. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The big one looked in that direction that the others went, and he put the wolf carcass on his back and sprinted at an unbelievable speed into the forest. My father snapped out of shock and stepped on the accelerator, and we got out of there. My father has PTSD of this event, and he takes meds to this day. I got really shocked that day. I always heard stories about the Sasquatch, but I never believed in them until this happened to us in 1998. I discovered RMSO looking for Sasquatch on the internet, and I was surprised with the amount of stories there are about these man-animal things. I guess it's not just my family that saw these things after all. RMSO asks, Hi Walter, the meds that your father still takes to this day, are you saying it's because of that one event? How many of your family members saw one or more of these creatures? Why did your father stop the trailer? Was it because of the wolves and the Bigfoot coming onto the road, or because of something else? Walter continues, Yes, the meds are stress and trauma related to this one event. I did this to my father. He says to me he can't explain the level of panic he felt when he saw them. It was an unexplainable level of fear, and the fact that the big one looked directly at him with its mouth full of blood traumatized him. Me and my father saw the three that were chasing the wolves. The noise woke up the family, and then the five of us saw the big one with the carcass of the wolf. My father stopped the trailer because of the wolves. He didn't want to hit the wolves with the trailer, and then we witnessed the event. The faces of the three smaller ones were very different from each other. One had a very round face with a big round nose. The other one had a pointy nose and big ears, human-like ears, and the other one had so much fur on its face, it reminded me of a sheepdog. And the big darker one with the carcass was the one we could see with the most detail. It is the one that traumatized my father. His face was like a man, but very primitive. Big nose, wide mouth, which was full of blood from the wolf. Big expressive cheekbones and a long chin. Dark eyes and coned head. 
Just one more thing. The skin tone of the smaller ones was light gray. The big one's skin tone was surprising. It wasn't like any of the others. The big one's skin tone was light, just like a light-skinned chimpanzee. That's how we saw the blood on its hands and mouth. RMSO responds, There was another road crossing encounter nearly a year before your family's encounter in Alberta, where another family watched a Sasquatch crossing the highway. BFRO report number 5182. It was October 1997 at the DeBolt intersection near the old forestry station on Highway 43, the main highway between Valley View and Grand Prairie. The witness writes, My spouse, daughter, and I were traveling from Valley View to Grand Prairie. I was driving. We were approaching the intersection that turns into DeBolt. Right there, the road widens to allow traffic to merge off the main highway. We met an oncoming vehicle. As soon as the vehicle passed, we seen it standing in the middle of the road. It was crossing the road in a southbound direction. It turned 180 degrees and looked at us over its right shoulder, and then took two steps, lifted its leg, and went over the guardrail and was gone. There was dead silence in the car. My spouse and I looked at each other and said nothing for about 10 miles. We were astonished and in awe. My spouse then said there is no way that we just seen what we seen. I thought, oh my gosh, we did see it. What I remember most about our encounter was the enormous size. He was gigantic, and his legs were like big tree trunks. He was very hairy. When he turned to leave the road, he did not run. He literally took two giant steps and lifted his leg and was gone. We went back the next day and took our dog with us. We did not find anything out of the ordinary. Over the guardrail, when we left the road... There used to be a small creek that is no longer there due to the twining of the highway. When we went back to the bank, it was so steep and the grass was so thick that we had trouble making it down to the creek bed. Our dog did not want to go down. We had to drag him with us. After this incident, I have had childhood memories of another incident in which I believe that I may have had an encounter that is close to this encounter area I'm telling you about today. I feel so privileged to have seen a Sasquatch. Most people do not believe me, but I know what I have seen. There was a follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Adrian Erickson. I have talked to TT on four occasions and have found her very credible. I asked her what color it was and she said dark brown. I asked her how tall. She believes it was tall and she said that she had a relative that six foot two inches tall but the Sasquatch was at least a foot to a foot and a half taller than that, but much, much broader. When asked what she remembers most about the incident, she replied that it was the massiveness of the Sasquatch, especially the thighs and legs and chest. Her husband could not seem to accept what he saw, but T.T. said that prior to the encounter, she had seen parts of the Patterson film on television, and then when she saw this animal, she knew exactly what it was. T.T. said that she was incredibly excited at seeing the Sasquatch and couldn't wait to get home and phone her dad. Today, she still sounds excited about it and says there was no doubt in her mind what she saw. I hope you guys enjoyed these Bigfoot reports out of Alberta, Canada. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.